is an unspoiled network podcast. This is Spoil Me, covering Veronica Mars, season two, episode 22, not pictured. In this episode, we find out exactly who orchestrated the bus crash. I am surprised. Very, very, very surprised. So surprised, guys. Welcome to Spoil Me. Welcome to the show, everybody. I am Natasha. Thank you very, very much to Jackie for commissioning this episode. When I finished the live watch last week, I checked to see when the next episode was, and I must have like missed, I, I must have misread it because I thought I wasn't going to get to talk about this episode until like the 20 something of January. And when I saw, when I finally like checked my schedule to create my planner for this week, I was just like, Oh, oh, good. Oh, it's right. It's right away. So thank goodness for that, because it was just going to be such a long time in between. And I was going to be like, just I'm dying to, uh, I want to know what happens because the way that this fucking episode ends is really, it's just, it's mean. It's a mean spirited ending. It's, it's just like, yeah, you know what we're going to do? We're going to leave her hanging. And just kind of like, fuck you, you know, all of y'all. <sighs> Brutal. Um, so thank you guys so, so much for cre- for commissioning the live watch of that, because that was really, really fun. I'm checking right now, and it looks like the next one isn't going to be until uh, season one, episode 22, two one twenty two. I think that this has gotten mixed up because it's saying that it's not until February now. Um, So I'm going to have to double check this with Candace because I'm like, this doesn't seem right to me. Um, So yeah, I'm gonna have to double check when the next one is. But I just is the next one if those of you who have commissioned it are in the chat. Is the next one actually a live watch? Or is that just a regular episode? Uh, Rachel says season three isn't until March. Okay. So season one, episode 22. Oh, wait, I was in the wrong year. Hi. Season two, episode 22. That's what it was. I misread it because I was in the wrong year. Season three, episode one is on the 17th, but it's a regular episode. So I can watch that one shortly after. Yay. I love the live watches. Don't get me wrong. I'm actually always excited when I see a live watch because that usually means it's going to be kind of a bonkers episode, but I am just dying to like find out what the fuck Keith is doing. And you know what? The way this show goes, I bet you I won't even know. I bet the first episode doesn't tell me. So I don't know why I'm getting my hopes up about that. Um, But yeah, so this episode, y'all. So... Do I want to go point by point, like plot wise, or do I just want to talk about the overall banana pantsness of what it turns out happened? Because I kind of want to do that first. Ah, guys. Anis is here. Rachel is here. Melanie is here. Hi, everybody. We haven't talked about SM Live Watch, actually. I got some money and I got excited and I threw it at you. Thank you, Anyas. I appreciate that. Um, this reveal, spoilers, it was Beaver. Huggabug's here too. Hi. Um, I do not know how I feel about this, y'all. I, on the one hand, I think I mentioned in the episode of where Veronica visits the college campus and it's really centered around campus rape and frats and like the really misogynistic culture there that I was thinking it was going to turn out that Michael Sarah was the rapist because he was so unassuming that I thought maybe they were going to try and like 
teach us a little bit of a lesson about how the guys that you think are definitely going to be the rapists often maybe they are also but often it's a guy who has managed to create a really nice guy outward sort of persona and that is sort of what it feels like the show is doing here with beaver they're like yeah we're gonna have him be a a really retiring seeming shy guy and then we're going to surprise you with this reveal about him. And on the one hand, I like that. I like that it's somebody that you just, you know, if you were thinking that it was going to be anybody that was out here raping young women and not caring about the lives of other people, that it would be Dick. However, it is really weird to me. The... I do, I'm not even sure if I want to say retconning because I feel like that really implies that they took a stand um, of Veronica's rape. I almost feel like the show hadn't considered this and, and didn't intend this and threw it in on top of everything just to be extra shocking. Like, I want I feel like they were afraid almost that what Beaver did in terms of blowing up the bus and killing a bunch of people that because the root cause of him doing this was that he had been abused that maybe the writers were afraid we weren't going to like hold him as responsible and so they threw in the assault as well in order to make sure we were like, no, this is a bad guy. And if you all have any information about the like behind the scenes in like process by which they came up with this, I would be really interested to hear it because it just it feels a little bit unnecessary and a little bit cheap. But if they like and and the thing is that I'm not like mad about it. It's not like I'm like, oh, what are you guys doing? I just am not really sure where I fall because it seemed like they had done this weird thing at the end of last season where they didn't really want Veronica to have been raped. So they pulled back and had it be this weird thing where her and Duncan had like raped each other. And were both like out of it. Apparently Duncan remembered more than she did, but they were both drugged. They were both like roofied basically. So I wasn't all about that, that being the resolution there because it felt like they were really trying to like sort of pull back on a very real trauma that she experienced and at the last second, they were like, no, 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 no. It's not what you thought. It wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. It was somebody that she loved. And it was just like, you know, they both got like taken advantage of by somebody and they both like wound up doing something that they wouldn't otherwise have done. But it's it, it just felt like all of a sudden they got kind of gun shy about it. So in that way, the decision to have it be like, no, she was actually raped. I kind of feel like it's a weird time to be doing this, I guess is really what it is. If they had done this as a reveal at the end of the last season, or even at the beginning of this season, where it felt like we had kind of wrapped that and then it turned out not. But because we have spent the entire season thinking that that was a resolved plot line, and her finding out that she has chlamydia only happened, what, two episodes before this one. It just seems so sudden. And and I don't really know what to make of it, you know. Um, and I have a hard time believing that, like, this, like, she, it's allegedly she got chlamydia because Woody, I hate it. Woody gave Beaver, I got you guys these names. Why? Oh my God, I can't say this without laughing. And it's not funny, but it's like, really? Why would you do this though? 
gave him chlamydia via raping and abusing him. And then Beaver raped and abused Veronica and gave it to her. But are you telling me that Veronica never went to a doctor after thinking that she had been raped? And in all of this time that she hasn't gone to get tested this whole time? That doesn't seem like her. Like, why are we just finding out about this now? There's just a lot about it that just seems like they wanted to shoehorn this in. And I uh, I like aspects of it. I like Beaver seeming like a nice guy. I like that we are looking at his brother the whole time and like are disgusted by him so much so that Beaver really flies under the radar. But I don't know, y'all. I really don't know what I feel. So I'm, you know, if you guys want to chime in and tell me how you felt about it when you found out. Let me know, because I'm curious, you know, I, I I could see being really annoyed with this or being really like, oh, OK, this makes sense. Like, I could see falling in either camp here, uh, and I wouldn't blame anybody for feeling that way. Um, as far as Beaver being the one to blow up the bus, this is one of those things um, I'm going to. I'm going to mention some spoilers for the magicians. So if y'all are not okay with that, just plug your ears for like the next three minutes. Um, if you are following a lot of different storylines, but the magicians is the one that's like coming to mind the most um, as most recently covered. There is a bit of a trend with people who have experienced trauma and abuse being the villain in the end. And it's one of those terrible things that I have very mixed feelings about because there is a reality that people who are abused often go on to be abusers. That is the reality of the cycle of abuse. That's how that works. So the fact that Beaver rapes Veronica after he himself being raped, unfortunately, makes a ton of sense. However, Beaver going on to blow up a bus full of innocent people. I don't know if that makes sense. I'm not so sure about that. And there's a thing in, in The Magicians where a kid who is sexually abused, they're like up against this like kind of anonymous big bad for this whole season of a show that they think is this one guy. And then it turns out it is the child as an adult now who has grown up that he had been abusing and that the man who was abusing him is like one of his captives at this point. And the abused child is the villain now. And it is just a really difficult thing to square that circle, as they say, where I feel like they did it better in Veronica Mars than the magicians because in the magicians, he is really turned into a cackling, dancing, singing, amusing, taking joy in the pain of others villain. Whereas with Beaver, there's a lot more of a sense of desperation to him and a feeling of just like, I just wanted to like live my life and not have to fucking have this be like, something I had to continue to deal with over and over again, and nobody would just leave it alone. So in that sense, I feel like a little bit more understanding of where what they were trying to do here. But it is really hard for me to reconcile him having this like, th having a conscience that is apparently fine with the murder of a, a huge handful of people that were not related to what was happening at all. I feel like deciding that this is how he was going to take care of the problem rather than like, these are people who know him and trust him. I, it, I assume they trust him that I feel like he could have, if he were determined to take them out, he could have done in a more direct and focused way rather than taking a bunch of people down with them. It's just a strange thing that 
I, w- I really am a little sorry that he's dead and can't be questioned and explain what the fuck he was even thinking. Because that's really where I'm at is just what was going through your head? The whole thing that the the whole motivation here, it turns out, is that he is one of three boys who were abused by Goodman. And I can't believe the guy's name is Woody Goodman. I know, guys, I know I keep like, but seriously. Um, and they wanted to come out and publicly accuse Woody Goodman because like this guy is, you know, well known in town and has a bunch of power and they feel like that's fucked up and they want to make sure that this dude doesn't get to just go on and live his life and be seen as like a good dude who cares about the community when he's out here raping kids. And Beaver is not interested in everybody knowing what happened, which like, I get it. Holy shit. It's hard enough coming out and and accusing somebody of assault when they are powerful. But if you are a teenage boy and the person you're accusing is a dude and we live in an incredibly homophobic victim blaming society. I mean, I, I can't imagine what he would then have to deal with in terms of classmates, the news, just the way that this would be handled, not delicately, I assure you. And I really sympathize with him not wanting people to know. It's just this extra step that I'm, I'm like, what made this the thing he decided to go with as far as method? He had access to the explosives due to the, uh, The fact that his, I I guess it's like his connection to um, Aaron's, how, how does this work out? How did he, because he got the, he was using the explosives that he got from Aaron's stunt man to help with his friends, like videos that he was recording. And so his access to those, he wound up. Uh, that gave the game away to the stunt man whom he had to then take out because that guy knew that he was the one who had taken the stuff and he, in order to deflect any sort of suspicion on himself, which I don't know why there would be because it seemed like this wasn't well known, but that is why he wrote Veronica's name on the guy's hand. Right. Um, which honestly, that was a pretty like that was a stroke of brilliance right there writing her name on his hand while it should have been seen as incredibly obvious that i i didn't pick up on it as being obvious like um this is the kind of show where that can be something that works for and against it if you are functioning in a script that wants you to take some things at face value but not question other things the fact that the guy had veronica's name written in sharpie in giant letters on his hand If this were a different kind of show, that would have made my eyebrows go up and be like, really? That was planted there. Get out of here. But because of the way this show works or that sometimes things are done in that very obvious way because of the tone of the show. And that's just exactly what it looks like. And it's not meant to be like a sign that there's something funky happening here. So I just totally like accepted that that was a reality. But when it's shown to us to be like, oh, no, that was him very, one could say clumsily, but it turns out it wasn't so much clumsiness. And actually, he was right about estimating exactly how intelligent law enforcement is around here. That was him deflecting. That makes sense to me. I'm willing to accept that. That actually seems like kind of a smart deal because he knows that Veronica's like in the middle of a bunch of stuff. And if they're going to be coming at anybody, they will be more than happy to knock on her door and get aggressive with her. Um, I want to mention too, Rachel is here. She says, I was wondering what you would think because you've been talking kindly about Beaver all year. I was shocked, but I wasn't mad or anything. I was just sad, mostly for Mac. Yeah. Um, guys, was Mac raped? Is that, or, or did he just bail 
and take all of her clothes and all the sheets and everything. I'm really hoping that he just bailed. Rachel says, I don't think she was. Okay. I really hope that we're right on that because I just don't want that for her at all. I do feel so bad for her either way because of course, if he had raped her or if he had had sex with her and she didn't know, like she could have been consenting in the moment, but not consenting overall because she doesn't understand the entirety of what's happening. Either way, it would have been really awful, you know, because she's clearly a virgin. Like she's talking about it with Veronica and how they're getting a room and does she have any advice? So that would be so traumatic for your very first time to be with somebody that it turns out had fucking killed a bunch of people and raped your friend and gave you chlamydia. Hi. So, yeah, I'm really relieved. I think we're all in consensus. Melanie and Agnes and Huggabug all say that he just bailed. Okay, good. Phew. Um, yeah, I am really – what's – I I like this being the reveal of what was going on in terms of Mac as well because I was so confused – about his attitude with her and her wanting to have sex and being really clear about that and him like getting angry with her not just like pushing her away he was doing that too but when she really was like dude what's your deal his like kind of angry reaction it makes a lot of sense so i don't the i Oh, I just have so many mixed feelings about this whole thing, you know? Um, so I just wanted to talk about that reveal and like my feelings on it. The fact that Beaver decides to kill himself tracks, you know, like, like I said, he's already, he's going through a bad enough time with what was going on with his dad. Apparently the thing that he was setting up with Mac which I thought that was going to turn out to be like a main, um, like I thought that was going to wind up being a scandal, something that he was like working on with Mac and uh, Kendall. God, I can't, I'm so bad at remembering Kendall's name. I don't know what that's about. Am I even right when I say that? I'm like Kennedy. Um, I thought that was going to turn out to be like some big scheme that he had going on. It turns out that he was just betting against incorporation. Um, and I don't know if that was because he was just taking it on faith that Woody wouldn't be able to pull it off. Or was he planning on like sort of revealing to everybody what the truth was about Woody in his own way and hoping that would like knock Woody's whole plan off balance? Or was he going to do something else? Because uh, that's a lot of confidence to have and it winds up paying off. Like there's a lot of money. I say a lot. It's like 8 million. It's not like for these people probably that much, but it's plenty for Kendall's lifestyle, I'm sure. Um, Huggabug says, no, that was the blackmail video. Which was the black? Oh, guys, see, I'm getting my wires all crossed here. The blackmail video was to keep him from doing the incorporation. So that was, but that was uh, the janitor who was filming those, right? Am I right about, or was that Beaver the whole time? He orchestrated that and the bombs so that Woody wouldn't do incorp. And the bombs were for that. Oh, okay. So killing his friends, it wasn't just to keep them from going out, but it was to throw doubt on Woody as well. I just don't know why he would have thought that th that suspicion would ever fall on Woody. I feel like he didn't plant enough seeds. It was only Veronica who started to turn up this information. Um, the body and the bomb in Woody's car. Oh, right. Right. I forgot about that whole thing. God, there are a lot of balls in the air this season, aren't there? Um, all right. I'm going to back up and you guys are going to have to help me out here. So we start off with fucking Aaron getting out of prison and everybody in the fucking crowd here is eating up his bullshit act. I'm cl glad to have my name cleared of this horrible crime. It's amazing how good this actor is at being 
like just sincere enough that you can see why people would buy it and just smarmy enough that you just want him to die like of a heart attack right there on the steps in front of everybody. Uh, the bomb in Woody's car, he framed Lucky for that. Right. God, that is fucked up, man. He framed Lucky. Like, uh, guys, Beaver was just brutal, man. Yikes. Um, I wish I could remember. I had, I was watched something recently with Owen where the, this actor who plays Beaver shows up and he's kind of like a shithead in it. And I wish I could remember what it was. He's kind of a goth in whatever it was. And I remember just being like, Oh God, this kid being a bad guy is really insufferable. And there were shades of that when he finally confronts Veronica on the roof and they have their like face off, there was a part of me that was kind of like, ah, oh, Jesus, I don't know about all this, but I feel like it's a good thing that it wound up being a pretty short lived moment for him that we didn't have to like sit through a bunch of episodes of him being this bad guy now, because I don't know if he as an actor could really have pulled it off. Um, Huggabug says, because Lucky figured out about Curly Moran and that Beaver had blown up the bus. Right. Okay. Yes. I'm getting, I'm, I'm remembering this, these connections now. Cause I know that Veronica like explains to him, to us really a bunch of the pieces and how they fit together. Like how he was behind a lot of them. Um, but I, I like, I'm remembering the big points about how he had access to stuff and what his motivation was. But then there are like little people on the edges, like Lucky, that I just forgot how that worked out. Poor Lucky, too. Man, Ugh, he deserved better. Um, so we see Veronica and she is really upset, understandably, at seeing the guy who murdered his uh, her best friend out of jail. And this like... Guys, I can't tell you how concerned I was. And it winds up never coming up again or being an issue. Veronica ran out on the on the exam that she was supposed to be taking that was going to determine whether she got her scholarship or not because this news, like she got an alert about it. And I was sitting there waiting for her to like go back to class and have to finish her exam or God knows what. And that never ha comes up. And the whole thing with like her, her, uh, scholarship, I don't feel like it's mentioned again, unless I was just so distracted by what was going on with murders that I missed that part. But I was so concerned about it. I was like really worried. And then it turns out to like kind of not be something that anybody really wants to talk about again. Um, and we go to her and her dad and he is like, uh, kind of, trying to get her to let it go and pulls the newspaper out of her hands that she's brooding over with uh, Aaron's face on the front of it. And I really appreciate that like a few minutes later, she comes into his office and there he is obsessing about it as well, because it is all well and good to try and tell somebody to leave it alone. But that is something you do when you're like trying to look out for them it's another thing to do that yourself. And especially when poor Keith had been trying and trying to get them to see what was really going on and nobody was fucking listening. And the way that they like baited him, all of this must be really hard as an adult who's like dealing with this on behalf of his kid. It just me must be like so fucking tough. You know, I feel for Keith a lot. And I always appreciate getting to see these like really human moments from him. Um, so yeah, she comes in to, and interrupts him um, when he's reading the newspaper again. I love it. And what happened to moving on? And she hands him Meg's dad is offering 20 grand for the capture of Woody Goodman. And he is not interested. Veronica's kind of like, hey, you know that we need money and you know that this guy is a bad dude. So what is the matter with you? Why aren't you going to be pursuing this? And 
he is saying that it's that he doesn't want to miss Veronica's graduation. But I really like when she says he molested children, her dad is just like, I don't know. I guess I'm just sentimental. I don't want to miss your graduation. And I'm like, you know, that capturing this dude would be the best graduation present you could possibly give her, dude. I guys, I am not. I understand the importance of graduation. Of course I do. Like, it's just, it's a massive moment for a lot of people's lives. Um, My graduation didn't mean that much to me because I was in a weird situation when I went, when I graduated, I had, had gone to the first three years of high school in Connecticut. And then for my final year, I had applied for an art school in California and I got accepted and I went out there. So when I graduated, I was graduating with a class of kids that I did not even know that well, to be honest. Like, it wasn't the way that it can be for so many people who either went through all four years with all these folks, or they went through like 10 years, you know, because they went through like elementary and middle and high school, more than 10. So it can, it's something that I think for a lot of other people has more emotional, like punch behind it than it did for me at the time. Um, but so I, I respect the fact that he's trying to put his daughter first, but man, I want that 20 grand dad, you know, like I don't have to worry about my, uh, my scholarship anymore. If you'll just snap up that guy, that'd be great. Then that'd get it all taken care of. Um, but inevitably Vinny comes back. Um, yeah, Hugglebug says, I think they just wanted a reason to bring Vinny back. Yeah, I think that might be exactly what it was. Because Vinny is like, hey, buddy, there's an awful lot of money. So why don't we just like go in this? And he says 6040. To which Veronica's dad is like, lol, you're in jail right now. I'm definitely going to be doing 50-50. Bye-bye. And I respect that. But yeah, Vinny is, he has like some information that he apparently isn't going to be able to access um, and cause you know, he, so he is able to help Keith out, but he won't be able to do the legwork himself. And, uh, it turns out that Woody is hiding in this, like, he's at this like resort under the name, Mr. Underhill, <laughs> which is the name that Frodo Baggins uses when he's like at the, uh, prancing pony, the end of the prancing pony. So I found that really funny. I don't know why. But as soon as they said it on the show, I like, because I was watching it live, I was like, Mr. Underhill. Like, you know how Aragorn like kind of makes fun of Frodo when he's like, yeah, all right, Underhill. It's a real fucking impenetrable disguise. Wow. Um, So yeah, I found that really funny. And he grips up Woody pretty easily. I thought that this was going to be a lot more of a like cat and mouse chase thing, but it turns out he's just fucking hiding in the bathroom and Woody comes to take a piss and he interrupts. And I was like, you're lucky you just didn't get piss all over you, but good, good on you. It really like, that was a, a quick open and shut. As it turns out, it's not a quick open and shut because Woody is blown up. Guys, look, first of all, so glad Keith wasn't on that plane. I was, I, I was pretty certain that he wasn't. I I felt like the way the show treated that moment, it wasn't given the gravity that it would have been given had he actually been on the plane. But I, I would be lying if I said I wasn't concerned about it at all. Oh my God. Anya says the deer head. I forgot. He chucks that at Keith. That was so funny. Uh, um, but Woody being blown up? I'm all right with it. I like it. If anything, like, because you know what? If he weren't blown up, we would have to deal with the Woody Goodman trial next season. And I don't know about y'all, but I don't know if I'm up for that. Like, it would just be th- – there's not really – he ran away. But when you get right down to it, what 
evidence is there that he abused these kids? All of them are dead. You know, there's nobody to actually speak to this except folks with like secondhand circumstantial evidence that has to be read into. So I feel like that wouldn't really be enough. This maybe his reputation would be tarnished. Maybe he'd be like, you know, taken out of power, but he would probably wind up mostly getting away with it and being able to continue to live his life like I just don't the the one thing I'm very curious about is Gia because she was not receptive at all to the assertion that her father was anything less than a model fucking citizen and I don't know if she is going to like will she know about these like uh assertions the only again what evidence is there other than like what Veronica said uh says Beaver said to her or does Beaver say anything about the abuse in front of Logan? I don't even remember that part. Um, <laughs> Melanie says, tired of trials. I mean, a little. It's not like, I don't want to say tired of trials, like flat out end of story, because they can still be interesting. They can still be done in a new way. But it would be a little bit repetitive to be like, oh, here's this big bad guy for this whole season uh, that has been, you know, low key getting away with stuff because he's rich and powerful. And then the next season, we're going to sit through his trial again. That would just be a very big repeat of what happened with Aaron. So I'm fine with that not being, you know, what we do here. But I'm not saying that if a trial begins to be like the center of things next season, that I'll be like upset about it. Because I think I would be okay with it depending on what it was we were having what, what it was about you know um hugabug says there's the recordings of marcos and the other kid killed on the bus yeah but like they don't say what happened and i do not believe that those would hold up i don't think just a couple of kids being like with well, everybody should know what he did it was wrong i don't feel like that's enough you know i mean these cases nowadays they just they can get away with shit even if they are literally caught on film raping a person. It's it, that shit doesn't matter. It, like, so I just have a hard time having any faith in the justice system when it comes to this shit. Um, Hugabug says if they could find the originals though, because Beaver edited his parts out of the conversation, maybe, but the part that we heard of his part of the conversation, he doesn't say, Oh yeah, this guy raped us. He says, do you really want everybody knowing about it? And I feel like if they don't flat out say he did X, Y, Z, and all of them are agreeing that this is what happened. Yes, indeed, he did rape us or he abused us or whatever. Unless they say that, if anything, Beaver's part of the conversation could be construed against the victims. Well, why would he what what does he mean? Do you really want people knowing about this? To me, this sounds like they were engaged in some questionable behavior that they, like I'm thinking like a lawyer here and lawyers can do really gross things if they want to, to twist things out of context and make it seem like the victims are actually after shit. So I just don't I don't have any faith left, guys. Hi. Uh, it's a shitty place to be mentally, to be honest. Um so yeah, I, I'm glad, uh, I'm glad that Woody got blew up and I'm really, really, really glad, like uh, sinking into a hot bath kind of glad that Aaron Eccles got shot in the back of the head while watching himself on television. It does not get more beautiful. Y'all. I was so happy. You don't know. Oh, you don't know. <sighs> there was one other thing that happened that I particularly like that'll be coming up in an episode of Killing Eve, which I think I'm covering on Friday. Um, so that was also another like Merry Christmas to me kind of moment. But this feels like almost more satisfying because I really did not see this one coming at all. The other, I was kind of like, Ooh, I hope this happens. I hope this happens. And it does. But this one was something that I was just like, well, if we're going to get at this guy, it's going to have to be some other way. And maybe that's going to be all of next season now. I don't know. And 
I wasn't even like upset about it. I was a little bit like, uh, I really would like to be done with this dude. But it also feels like reality that some guy like this is going to be around just tormenting you like that feels true. Um, Rachel says that scene in the elevator with him and Veronica was really terrible. Yeah. And like, well, there's a part of me that's like, we're really turning him into like the mustache twirling victim now who's like, I was so glad to get her to finally shut up. Another part of me is like, yeah, you know, even if he isn't this kind of villain, I could see him enjoying so much that he got away with it, that he would put on this kind of persona just for the fun of it, because he knows that there's nothing Veronica can do about it. So it's not even necessarily that he genuinely is like cackling and rubbing his hands together about that bitch got what she deserved. It's more like... I am really loving that you, another little teenage twat, tried to nail me to the wall for this and you're not going to get anything out of it and fuck you. And I'm going to just rub it in, in the cruelest way possible. That feels like a power play rather than just like, I'm so evil kind of thing. And the power play is, don't get me wrong, evil in its own way. But it's rather than him like specifically taking joy in pain in general, it's him really trying to stick it to one person in particular that almost fucked everything up for him. And that makes more sense to me. Um, so yeah, that moment I was just like, good God, we really like went for it, huh? In the, in the elevator. And I thought maybe Veronica was recording him. There was a part of me that thought she had like caught that on tape. But then I was like, he got tried. And he was like, you know, found not guilty. I don't think that you can try a person again for that same crime. Um, they might have to come at him with slightly different charges the way that they do. So part of me thought that was how this was going to go was that we were going to get this reopened because she had like recorded him saying this. But it turns out to be so much better. Oh, it was the Australian flag. Thank you, Hugabug. I saw the little flag stuck into the dirt and uh, I or into the sand because he's on the beach with his kid. And I really like, oh, fuck. Hold on. Sorry, guys. I'm getting sidetracked here. But I, I was looking at the flag and I was kind of like, is he in Britain? Because there's like the Union Jack is part of the uh, Australian flag, right? So... Okay, he's in Australia. That's pretty fun. And yeah, there's a bit of trivia, I think Chris Goodnight sent, where evidently, like, the CW and Warner Brothers or something, they were, they were like, in the middle of doing some kind of deal, and they didn't know if there was going to be another season of Veronica Mars. And people interpreted this phone call, because apparently... When uh, he picks up the phone, he says CW. And then what's his face replies with it's a done deal because he's killed Aaron. And people thought that was supposed to be like a little nod to the fact that the deal had gone through. Um, Clarence, Clarence Weedman, is it Weidman? Weedman? Yes. Thank you, Yoga Bug. Um, I think that seems like unlikely that it would have been an actual nod because they would have had to record it before that went through. Right. But who knows? Maybe, uh, maybe they were that confident that they were like, yeah, let's drop this little Easter egg in here. We know that deal's going through. It's fine. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to mention that because, uh, Chris Goodnight sent that in. Um, but yeah, the, the whole thing with Kendall, I had been saying, that as much as Kendall's like gross, I, I'm not mad at the hustle. Like any woman who decides to like use her looks to be a gold digger. I respect that. Honestly, if men, men know when they're being used for money by a beautiful woman, it's a transaction. It's fine. We all engage in transactions all the time. If you have the patience to do that kind of labor in every aspect of your life, because that's what it becomes if you marry a person, 
then that's your choice. You have decided it's worth it for you. For me, it would absolutely not be worth it. Oh my God, no way. But I get it. I feel like there's something else going on with her though, because remember guys, I thought that Veronica had gotten chlamydia because of Duncan and that there had been that weird scene where Kendall wants to talk to Duncan and then it seems as if it's implied that they slept together. And I was like, oh my God, does Kendall sleep with him, give him chlamydia and he gave it to Veronica. But now I'm like, maybe that moment where she talks to Duncan really was a talk. Maybe she's got some other shit going on because the, the whole way that the season ends is we sort of leave it with her thing, with us thinking that she is working for the Fitzpatrick somehow. But when she goes to see Keith and she opens that suitcase, he has this response in his expression that makes me think it's, way bigger than that that it's not she's not just like working for them and coming out here to be like oh hey i want you to like god knows what we would have thought that the easiest thing to assume is that the briefcase is full of money or something you know but it could be full of drugs it could be full of recording devices it could but i don't know you know i feel like kendall is an agent of some kind. And I don't, when I say agent, I don't mean like officially working for a, you know, government agency of some kind, but I feel like she has another agenda beyond simply just like draining money out of rich dudes. And I think maybe that was why she talked to Duncan that one time. I'm very curious about like, Oh, I don't know. Was she involved with like getting him hidden away? I don't know what to think. Um, but I'm getting, I'm getting all guys. I'm so all over the place with like this, this wrap up. Cause I have like 15 minutes left and I feel like I'm just barely, we have, Oh guys, we have fucking Weevil getting scooped up by the cops, by lamb specifically right before he is about to graduate. Oh, Brutal. Brutal. I hated it. I hated it. I hated it. I hate Lamb so much. This is a really good... I feel like this is a really good example of the way that cops dehumanize people who are criminals. Like... Yes, Weevil committed murder, essentially. Like, he set this dude up to die, 100%. I'm not trying to act like he's innocent. I'm not trying to act like he's, like, an angel. At the same time, it would have been an act of kindness to just let him walk across the stage. It would have been something that meant a lot to him, to his grandmother, and would have cost them, like, very little time. And it's one of those things that it's really easy from the outside to look at a situation like this and be like, no, fuck that guy. He's a criminal. Oh, he wants to walk across the stage all of a sudden. Should have thought of that before you killed somebody. And there is an understandable edge to that. Like, I get it. But there are moments like this where I'm just like, it's awfully easy for us to throw that out there at people and not think about the million things that we have done to fuck up our own lives. And then we got a pass on it for whatever reason, you know, the times that we definitely were driving 40 miles an hour over the speed limit, but they let us off with a warning and we acted like that was just our due. When in fact we just got really lucky and that cop was in a good mood or we submitted something late. And we knew perfectly well when the fucking due date was and we just didn't fucking do it. And we wound up, they accepted it for whatever reason. And we just, as human beings, we love to forget the times where we were done a favor and behave as if everything that we got was due to our own merit and never due to luck. 
We don't ever like to think about the fact that we are at the whim of luck and people's moods a lot of the time. So what we got, we got like legitimately, right? We got it because we deserved it. Unlike all those other people. And this is one of those things where I'm like, we will, it would have taken nothing at all to just let him walk across the stage and do this one thing. It would have just been a nice thing to do. And he can't do it because Lamb just is like so fucking prideful and self-centered. It's just really, really gross. Um, and Huggabug is saying, yeah, he had mentioned it a bunch of times. This is something that he really cares about. Like it could you could see somebody thinking, oh, well, he's just trying to buy himself time so that he can like escape. But we know that's not it at all, that this is genuinely he is like. I will walk across the stage and on, you can meet me on the other end and arrest me. Just let me do this. But Lamb is obviously seeing this as like a ploy. And, you know, to, to, there's a point at which how much of this is just because we know Weevil, right? We know that he's serious. We know his history. We know the way he feels about this. And we know he's not going to try and run. If he were anyone else, though, and he just wanted to graduate, would we be this compassionate about it? And would we want Lamb to be this compassionate? Like, I would think, oh, Lamb, you idiot. If it was somebody else and they did just decide to use it as an opportunity to run, I'd be like, Lamb, what is wrong with you? Seriously, you are so bad at your job. So, you know, it's just like one of those things where knowing more about the situation just makes you feel like you want to be more of a human being. And it's really unfortunate that we are so bad at that a lot of the time, unless we know every detail about a person's life. We have so little patience and so little willingness to like step back and acknowledge that there can be mitigating circumstances or that somebody could be sincere about something, you know, it's just, I don't know. It's tough. People are complicated. That's what I'm saying. Um, Anya says he's still getting his diploma if he's not there for graduation. I I believe so, yeah, because um I wasn't there for the graduation of my uh, pastry and baking because I was um on my sort of honeymoon. So and I still got mine. So yeah, I believe so. But it's just the actual like ceremony of him walking across that he doesn't get. Instead, it gets to be forever tarnished by his arrest instead, which is just terrible. Um. Let's see. What did you think of the alt reality dream sequence? I really like that, actually, because when as soon as we're like panning across this uh, bedroom, there's a feeling to it of like, are we in Gia's room? Like, where the fuck are we? It just shows us so much of what changed about Veronica. Her taste shifted when her innocence was taken away, you know, so she had been somebody who was pretty girly ultra feminine into like whites and pale pinks and things to be like really you know and up until a point when her friend died she was raped and people sort of turned on her and her father and all of a sudden that stuff did not hold the same appeal anymore and felt like the trappings of a different life of a different lifestyle as well one could argue that part of her attraction to that stuff was um, also based in class and the way that she wanted to be a part of a class that she is now kind of cut off from. And maybe there's a piece of her that feels like she was play acting at being part of a world that she's not really part of. I liked those details a lot. I'm into that. Um, and let's see, I'm trying to find, because like we only have five minutes left and I am, you know, I've been all over the place with my recaps um, oh yeah, we have the confrontation with her on the roof and when she says something about, uh, Beaver, you said Dick pushed you into a room with me after I'd been roofied, but you didn't run out like you said you did, did you? You wanted to prove you were a man. Um, and it's just like, really guys, this moment is the, the way that he laughs at her. When she says this, this is where it sort of crossed over for me from being like, wow, this is an interesting twist to like, are we making him like a supervillain? Because he's 
she is saying that he raped her. And rather than responding, you know, he is somebody who has experienced this himself. He treats it like a joke, like he really like put one over on everyone in a way that doesn't feel totally genuine to me. On the other hand, maybe that's like a distancing tactic. I don't know. Um, so eventually, like, because she manages to send a uh, text to Logan, who comes up to the roof and kind of like jumps into the middle of everything. They fight. The gun gets knocked away. And of course, she thinks because he says something about how, oh, I uh, planted a bomb on Woody's plane. So I hope your dad's OK. And then it just explodes. She's standing there with the gun on Beaver and he has to talk her down, Logan does, from t killing Beaver, Cassidy. Sorry, my name's Cassidy. Um, and she at this point screams like, he raped me. He killed my father. Like, all of this is a totally understandable reason to kill him. And there's a sort of look on Beeve's face as Logan takes the gun away from her. Like, he's low-key disappointed. Like, he now he has to just kill himself because she didn't do it. And that's just, like, such a pain in the ass, you know? Not even pain in the ass. Like, that makes it sound a little bit more cavalier. But, yeah, this this moment of him being like, oh, guess I'm going to have to do everything myself, you know? And when he turns around and says, my name is Cassidy, there is a real sadness there of just like this kid who just, you know, it's, it's, just, he's just kind of a non-person to a lot of people, you know? Um, and he, Logan tells him don't, and he says, why not? And there's just this long pause as Logan tries to think of something to say. Kid's mom is gone. His dad is gone. His brother's an asshole. No, like, he was abused and is now guilty of murder. There is really not a lot of brightness left for him. And he kind of smirks at Logan when Logan doesn't have an answer and just says, that's what I thought. And just backs off the building and jumps. And you can see Logan's face is just like, he, his acting here was pretty good of just like, he is shook by literally watching somebody commit suicide in front of him. But you can see his face like he doesn't know how to react. Like, it's just so, there. he has such mixed feelings about what's happened because this is a terrible person who hurt this girl that he is in love with and it's an awful thing that he just saw but also like fuck that guy but also that's not okay either I just thought he played this really well with just like more confusion than anything you know Um. so there's this whole other subplot um, that's going on with Jackie and Wallace uh, I liked this as the resolution. I thought this was really interesting. I don't really care about Jackie that much, but it was, I thought, a nice way of like capping things. So it turns out that Jackie was lying about her mother and the like where she used to live and how things used to be. It turns out she got knocked up and she left her child with her mother to raise and went off to live with her father and kind of like kind of pretend that never happened low key, you know, and he is Wallace is still under the impression that she went to Paris for school, but it turns out that she is in Brooklyn because once her father pulled away from her and started treating her um, with a lot of distance, the way that he had been before, it sort of reminded her of, the fact that she was like abandoning her child, that she felt mad about the way that her father was behaving, but that she was no better, that she had essentially done the same thing, if not worse. And she was faced with wanting to do right. So she went back to Brooklyn and lied about where she went, that she was at school. And 
Wallace gets tickets to Paris with a layover in New York and Veronica goes and sees Jackie when she's on her trip out to New York and tells her that, you know, I kind of had a feeling that you weren't telling the truth because your grades were not good enough to get into the school you claimed that you were in. No offense. Um, and she says something else about like tracking her down specifically to Brooklyn, but she tells Jackie, he's going to have this layover. You need to go and find him. And Jackie goes and basically there's not going to be like a long distance thing between the two of them. She's like, listen, you are going, your life is back there in that town. And my life is here and I already have a child and I have responsibilities and I'm really trying to like make shit work. I'm not holding you back. I don't want to do that. And I think we just like, I really do like you, but I don't think that this is just meant to work out. And I thought that that was a nice, mature way to do this. That It's not like anybody holding on to something or trying to make it into a thing that it's not. It's just all of us realizing that things have to end sometimes. Nothing, nothing goes forever. And it shouldn't necessarily either. The fact that things end is what makes them important, you know. So I like that reveal. I thought that that was um, a really interesting and uh, quite an intriguing surprise for her character. Um, so, yeah, I do feel bad for Wallace, though, because he really just had no idea what was going on there. Um, and I'm trying to remember because, like, Veronica goes and sees her somehow. But then there's another trip to New York that she's supposed to take with her dad. Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't really wind up. Like, it doesn't matter, but her and her dad are about to, like, board a flight at the end of this. Um, oh, she calls her, Anya says. Okay, I'm remembering, like, a face-to-face -face conversation, but maybe it was just the way the scene was, like, cut with them sort of facing each other. Um, but her dad, Kendall shows up and shows him whatever's in this briefcase, and her dad does not show up for their flight. So I am dying to know what the fuck. Like... There was a part of me that almost thought, has he been like taken hostage or prisoner somehow? Because I had a hard time believing that he would just bail and not let Veronica know at all. But I'm going to be full disclosure here, guys. I saw a like, uh, what do you call it? A screen cap of the next episode of him just in a baseball cap, like hanging out somewhere in the sun. And so I was like, Okay, I guess that's not what happened. Now, that's not necessarily true. The screen cap could be from any number of different scenarios that does not exclude him being taken prisoner somehow. I just don't know how he just leaves Veronica hanging. That's the main thing that feels so not Keith to me. So I guess we'll see. But yeah, what a place to end the f final episode. Like, I was so mad, you guys. I was so angry. Um. All right, I'm over time. I'm going to wrap this up. Thank you again very, very much to Jackie for commissioning this episode. I don't think Jackie was even in this chat. I'm sorry that you missed it, Jackie. But thank you to everybody else and for all of you like talking through uh, things that I missed. I really appreciate that because there's a lot going on, like I said. And um, I'm really excited to be able to watch the next episode unless you guys decide to make it a voyeur. But, you know, let me know ASAP because I might watch it like later today. So, uh I am really, really excited about it. Thank you all again. And I will see you soon. And by soon, I mean in two months with a new episode. Toodaloo, motherfuckers. Spoiled Network Podcast.